Joining us now is BC's Minister of Health, Adrian Dix. Minister, thank you for being here. Hey, great to be on the show. Well, uh, really happy to have you on. Uh, so much to talk about. And really, I want to begin here with uh, what was unveiled yesterday by your Premier to fast track the licensing of foreign trained doctors to practice in British Columbia. So this is in addition to the earlier announcement. Just how quickly, though, will the doctors be licensed? How quickly will that help alleviate the kind of health care challenges in the province right now? Well, it's to address the current ones and, of course, the medium term challenges that we face. So we took four measures yesterday. One was to increase a program called the Practice Ready Assessment Program, already a successful program, but to increase the annual intake in that program from 32 to 96. That's doctors internationally educated and trained who come here and work against a return to service for the first three years. In other words, we've used this in the past to deal with issues in rural and remote communities. So this is a tripling of that program, which is significant on an annual basis. In addition to that, we're creating a new category of physicians and have done certified by the, the College of Physicians and Surgeons here, associate physicians, which allow doctors who have not reached the level of training to be licensed as a physician in Canada at this point, but have significant training to work under the supervision of doctors. That's a new category. We believe that's going to significantly contribute to the system. Thirdly, we're allowing people to be assessed before they come to British Columbia. This will cut down some of the barriers for doctors from all around the world who want to come and practice and live in British Columbia. And fourthly, and importantly, we're, uh, we're reducing some of the barriers for U.S. doctors to come to Canada who wish to. We believe that there's a significant number who would want to. And right now, there's significant barriers to them coming uh, to British Columbia, and we're significantly reducing those barriers. So this is in addition to very significant steps we've all already taken. Mm -hmm, and this mm -hmm. represents the premier... Uh, the new Premier, Premier David Eby's uh, commitment, I think, to open up uh, and to reduce barriers while maintaining standards, and that's what we're doing but, here. But, but how quickly will it actually have an impact? Because at this point, and correct me if I'm wrong here, I believe there's about a million British Columbians right now uh, without a primary care physician. Uh, you, you have patients right now reporting that they're waiting uh, in excess of eight hours, sometimes 10, sometimes longer, to, to see a doctor in ER. So all these measures, uh, added, how quickly of an impact will they actually have? Well, we started in June what are called new to practice contracts. We made changes to those uh, and we dramatically increased the number of people working right now in the system who are new doctors who last year were resident doctors or new doctors working in, in what we call a full service family practice and in the community. And that's important because we're the million people you're talking about. That's what that's addressing some of their issues. In August, we implemented which are now fully subscribed interim measures with family physicians to support existing family practices and stabilize them and allow them in the short run to build out. In October, we tra uh, transformationally reformed the primary care system with our doctors, with the doctors of BC. They're going to be voting on the agreement that comes from that, and the, those votes will be announced soon, but we're very optimistic. This is a transformational change to primary care. We're adding 128 seats to the UBC Medical School. We're taking more steps in creating another medical school in the province of BC. So these things take our immediate in the sense that we'll see an increase in the PRABC program next year and these are immediate steps and they're also midterm steps we know in british that more people are coming to british columbia every day we are the fastest growing province in the country people are moving here from other parts of the world but also other parts of the country and that means we, that gives us some opportunities in mm -hmm. terms of new health professionals but also we have to provide care to all those people in I, terms I, of I, what I, you're talking about about bc children's hospital which is the yes. second part of your question waits in emergency rooms we, we've been preparing for what's going to be a very very difficult respiratory illness season here and everywhere else in Canada, really everywhere else in the Northern Hemisphere. At the end of the day, there are many people still frustrated, and, and you're right, BC's not alone in this. You, right across the country, you're hearing people frustrated with the fact that they cannot get a primary doctor, they're frustrated by the fact that uh, they are waiting long times uh, to actually see a doctor if they report to an ER because they don't have a primary doctor. What's your message, particularly to British Columbians right now who are feeling this frustration? Because the measures aside, as you, I guess, allude to or agree to, these are not immediate fixes. So what do you say to people in British Columbia right now who are feeling the frustration? 
Well, part of the problem was uh, in the past, uh, we've had governments that didn't take any action at all on primary care. And some of these problems do take three, four, five years to address. Of course they do. And that's why you need to take action for three, four, five years from now. If you don't do it, then it's going to be much worse three, four, five years from now. So those actions are needed. And we've had really an absence of action. Um, you know, we went from 300,000 people in 2003 to 900,000 people in 2017 without a family doctor in BC, without any real significant response uh, from the government of the day. So we need to take action for those problems. But we're taking action now. I think what this period tells us, what it really tells us, is the central importance of public health care. I think our response in BC to COVID-19 was amongst the best in the entire world. And we have to build on that by saying, by giving the support to, to public health care that it needs now. And that means the provincial government doing it. That means people playing their role by, for example, getting vaccinated, but also uh, the federal government, which is, of course, um, uh, its role has been declining year unto year in the past to play its role as well. Minister Adrian Dix, thank you very much for the time today. Hey, thank you. Anytime, Michael. Take care. You too.